All right. All right. All right, y'all, welcome to night three. And tonight is about freedom. But first, I want to acknowledge a loss today, a man who always fought for freedom. Today, we lost Congressman Bill Pascrell, who passed away early this morning. Now, he's a Jersey legend. He is a powerful pugilist, a prince of Patterson. He served in our state assembly. He served as our mayor. And for 27 years, he served in Congress. He never forgot where he came from in Patterson. And he never stopped fighting. He could push some pachyderms. He fought for the people. And so today, while we're heartbroken, we all are a people who can hold loss and joy in our hearts because we are sad for his loss, but we celebrate his life. Let's give him a round of applause. Wow. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Lisa Blunt Rochester, know that name. Know that name. My friend, my sister, and soon to be our senator. I can't wait to work with her in the Senate. But next, we're going to hear more about the ongoing fight for reproductive freedom. This is a fight that affects every single American. No matter where you live, so-called blue states or red states, if Donald Trump has his way, he's going to push through their extreme agenda. Project 1825. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I rolled that back. I got that wrong. Project 1925. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Project 2025. That poisonous agenda where every single state will be in a state of crisis. So let's hear more from leaders who are fighting back. Some of you may have the wrongful impression that I'm about to sing with this man. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. But I'll tell you what, I want to bring you all to a street in Newark, New Jersey called Martin Luther King Boulevard. On that street was this incredible housing project called Brick Towers. We never mistaked wealth with worth. In those towers was a tenant president named Miss Virginia Jones. Her son was murdered in the 1980s in the lobby of one of those buildings, but she was a woman of invincible joy. And I'll tell you this, I used to ask her, how are you so joyful? And she would always tell me, this church woman, She'd say, the joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. Come on now. Come on now. She taught me that you've got to generate the joy, that hope is the active conviction that despair will never have the last word. And so tonight, there are so many challenges in our nation. There are so many problems that we're facing. Heck, if America hasn't broken your heart, you don't love her enough. But yet, we will be joyful warriors. We are going to bring back to the journey of our nation joy. And if there's any tradition in America that has helped us to generate that joy, it has been the artists of America. It has been those folks bringing the rock and roll and the funk bringing the gospel and the hard rock. Well, tonight we are blessed by one of those great American artists that helps us to cleanse our spirits, to raise our hearts, and to bring in that joy. Ladies inspired, maybe I will sing a song. To Donald Trump, a little B.B. King classic, the thrill is gone. <laughs> Thank you.
I want you all to know tonight is about joy. American history, our common history, is a testimony to taking on the insurmountable and achieving the impossible. That should bring us joy. Our progress never, ever came easy. But in America, we do hard things. We built labor unions and small businesses. We created great public education and world-changing innovation. We nurtured the best athletes and artists humanity has ever seen, and we kept the promise of Medicare and Social Security for our seniors. Look at who we are. Against bigotry and hate, we advanced equal rights for all Americans. Civil rights, workers' rights, LGBTQ rights, reproductive rights, the right to marry who you love, the right to be free. We did all of this in a way that didn't pit American against American. We did this by healing rifts, by bridging divides, by pulling people together. And all the while, we in this nation lived up to our calling and our creed to be a more perfect union, to make this one nation under God a little more indivisible. Now, you all know this. Trump betrays these ideals. He viciously attacks Democrats and Republicans. His put-downs know no shame. John McCain's military service, Nikki Haley's heritage. Women, people with disabilities, trans people are veterans. He is indiscriminate in his put-downs. His is the politics of smear and fear, not inspiration and elevation. Donald Trump speaks more of American carnage than American compassion. But in America, you can't lead the people if you don't love the people. All the people. Now, our nominees, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz, they bring the joy. Think about it. They're descendants of immigrants, shopkeepers, slaves, educators, people who faced pain with perseverance, people who met hate with love. They are the living dreams of their ancestors. But look in this arena. Look around you right now. We are all our ancestors' wildest dreams. Generations who faced impossible odds and that responded to every one of their challenges with that classic American creed, yes, we can. So there are doubters out there. There are people that doubt our collective strength. They want to tell us how bad we are. They want to say that they alone can save us. Well, we know that the power of the people is greater than the people in power. And we're not. We're not going to lose our faith. Look, I want everybody in here to let us all say it together. I believe in America. Let me hear you. I believe in America. I believe in America because our elders told us that no matter what the obstacle, like the gospel says, we shall overcome. I believe in America because our soldiers died on beaches and battlefields. They died at sea and in the air so that we could be free today and say together, I believe in America. I believe in America because our fighters fought at Stonewall. 
Our marchers marched in Selma. Delegates met at Seneca Falls. Every single one of them believed in America, even when America didn't believe in them. Say it with me now. I believe in America because King dared to dream the impossible dream, because Neil Armstrong went to impossible heights, and because when we elect Kamala Harris, there is not a boy or girl in America from any creed, color, or heritage that will ever think being President of the United States is impossible again. I Say it with me. I believe in America, the land of hope and heroism. I believe in America, the land of courage and compassion. I believe in America, where we share common ground and common cause and one common destiny. And let me tell you, if you believe in America, if you love in America, then you will work for America. And when we work together, when we stand together, when we organize together, when we vote together, I will tell you this, when we fight, we win.